Today we are going to be talking about the relationship between antibodies, antigens, and immunity. The human body is exposed to bacteria all day, every day. Everything we touch contains bacteria, so in order for our body to fight these off, they have to have defense mechanisms, and there are two main types of these. The two types of defense mechanisms are innate immunity and acquired immunity. Innate immunity is nonspecific, so it fights off as many different types of um, diseases and bacteria possible. It will try and fight off anything that is foreign to the body. And there are external barriers and internal barriers, which I will go into more detail later. Um, then there is acquired immunity, which is highly specific, where innate immunity is nonspecific. Um, acquired immunity only develops after being exposed to that foreign substance. All right, so going into more depth about innate immunity, there is two lines of defense here. And the first line is like the skin and the mucous membranes, which are the external defenses. And then there are the internal defenses, which is the second line of defense. And for the in first line of defense, skin is the absolute first one. And skin is a good defense because the sweat and sebaceous glands secrete so the secretions cause the skin to have a pH of around 3 or 5, which for many bacteria is way too acidic to survive. And these secretions also contain antimicrobial proteins, and these kill the bacteria. And then the mucous membranes. Um, mucous membranes are a type of epithelial tissue which line our organs and cavities. These secrete mucus, and the mucus traps the bacteria trying to enter these organs. So now I'm going into the second line of defense in innate immunity, and the main part of the second line of defense is phagocytosis, and phagocytosis is the ingestion of bacteria or foreign particles by phagocytes, and phagocytes are a type of white blood cells. And the way this works is that the bacteria usually have a receptor that the phagocytes can pick up um, because the normal body cells do not have them. So the phagocytes attach to the invaders that have those receptors and then engulf it. And then they form a vacuole which then fuses with a lysosome. And these lysosomes destroy the bacteria because lysosomes have ni nitric oxide which destroy them. And they also have enzymes such as lysozyme that degrade the mitochondria which obviously destroys the bacteria. So there are four types of white blood cells that are phagocytic, and these are neutrophils, macrophages, eosonophils, and dendritic cells. And the neutrophils work by um, detecting infected tissue, which they then enter that infected tissue and they engulf and destroy the bacteria. Macrophages develop from monocytes, and um, the macrophage will receive a chemical signal that will activate the macrophage's defense mechanisms. Um, eosinophils are specifically a defense against parasites, and what they do is they line, themselves, um, they line themselves up against the parasitic bacteria, and then they release destructive enzymes that will damage that parasitic invader. Then there are dendritic cells, which also work like macrophages work, and they ingest the bacteria. A second part to the second line of defense is the complement system, which is a system made up of 30 blood proteins. These proteins are inactive when there is no infection, and when there is an infection detected, a series of steps are triggered and cause the invading cells to lyse or burst. Interferons are also a part of the second line of defense. These interferons are secreted by body cells when they are infected with a virus. This alerts the neighboring body cells to secrete substances which will stop the virus from reproducing. So now we are moving into talking about acquired immunity and just to go over what it is again, acquired immunity is highly specific and is only developed after you are already exposed to that foreign invader or bacteria. So this is just some of the key vocabulary you need to understand in order to get what's going on in acquired immunity. So there is a lymphocyte, which is a type of white blood cell with a single round nucleus. Then there is antigens, which are a foreign molecule that causes a response from lymphocytes. Then there is an epitope, which is the small portion of an antigen that the lymphocyte recognizes and binds to. Then there are antibodies, which is a blood protein that is produced once the body is in contact with an antigen. This is what counteracts that antigen.
The first thing I want to discuss about acquired immunity is the fact that innate and acquired immunity actually work together. And how they do this is that when macrophages and dendritic cells are um, engulfing the bacteria, cytokines are secreted and these cytokines help to activate lymphocytes. Um, so vertebrates have two main types of lymphocytes and those are B cells and T cells. Both respond to specific epitope on an antigen and um, what this means is that they are both specific and they have like B cells and T cells. None of them are working to resist the same antigen. And the difference between B cells and T cells is their structure. Here are the st structures of the B cell and T cell receptors. So this is what protrudes from the cells to detect the antigens. Um, the B cell receptor is the Y-shaped one on the left and this consists of four polypeptide chains, two identical heavy chains, two identical light chains, a transmembrane region, and disulfide bridges, which are what connect the heavy chains to the light chains. Both of these T cell and B cell receptors have C areas and V areas. The C areas are known as constant regions, meaning that the amino acid sequences vary from B cell to B cell, or T-cell to T-cell, but not by much. Whereas the variable regions, um, they have very different amino acid sequences from one cell to another. The major difference between these two structures is the fact that a B-cell receptor has two antigen binding sites, whereas the T-cell receptor only has one antigen binding site. Now moving on to how these antibodies or B-cell receptors actually work. The antibodies recognize the specific antigen they are designed for and then they bind to that, but these antibodies are not what actually destroy the antigens. What they do is they flag them for destruction and then the destruction is carried out by other cells within the immune system. Another way antibodies work is that they bind to the invader and then they code it so that it cannot enter and infect other tissue that has not yet been infected. This is the clonal selection theory, and this is the definition the book gave of it, and it states that each antigen, by binding to a specific receptor, selectively activates a tiny fraction of cells from the body's diverse pool of lymphocytes. This relatively small number of selected cells gives rise to clones of thousands of cells, all specific for and dedicated to eliminating that antigen. So what this clonal selection theory is saying is that when the body is exposed to the antigen for the second time, the B cell will start to rapidly produce these anti antibodies to that antigen so that the blood is filled with those antibodies and is able to fight off that specific antigen. The last thing that I'm going to be talking about today is active and passive immunization. And active immunity is immunity that is developed after being naturally exposed to the bacteria. So this could be after you get a disease, you then have the antibodies in your body to resist this um, bacteria. And they can. this is also developed after you get vaccinated. Passive immunity is immunity that develops after antibodies from an immune organism are transferred into an organism with no immunity. Passive immunity is not long term. It only lasts while transferred antibodies are still alive. And then once those antibodies die, then the immunity is gone. Passive immunity is usually artificially done, meaning that the antibodies from an immune organism are inserted into the organism with no immunity artificially, but there is one type of natural passive immunity and that is through breastfeeding. Breastfeeding gives the baby the, the antibodies in the mother so that they can have that immunity without actually being exposed to the disease. Okay, so this is a quick and very general summary of the key points that we went over. So the first thing to remember is about innate immunity, and this is the non-specific immunity that has two lines of defense, the first line being the external barriers and the second line being phagocytosis. Then we learned about acquired immunity, which is only developed after being exposed to bacteria, and this is all relating to the antibodies, antigens, B cells, T cells, all of that stuff. Then we learned the clonal selection theory.
and active immunity, which is developed after being exposed to bacteria, and passive immunity, which is developed after antibodies enter our body from another source.